Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Pastor Lenny once again, and I am so <clears throat> blessed to be with you this morning. I am so grateful to my daddy God, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit for, you know, calling me into the ministry and, and to allow me the privilege, privilege of sharing. Well, like Paul, I call it my gospel. I've taken ownership of it, and I hope you take ownership of the gospel. And um, I'm just so grateful that God has given me this opportunity. And I am so grateful to Julianne and Butch Hartman. I really love them. I love what they've done for my family. I love what they've done for my daughter, Allison, and my son-in-law, son Zane. Julianne and Butch have hearts of gold. No, they don't have hearts of gold. They have the hearts of Jesus. And I'm just so grateful and thankful for them allowing me this opportunity. Well, this would be um, the second broadcast. So if you're watching it, I guess it means they like the first broadcast. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I have a real, a real good session plan for you today. And um, although it's not about how to be healed, it is fully about healing. Because when you understand these truths, Healing will be a fruit. Healing will be a fruit. And we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about image and likeness. And um, I have a feeling that you have not heard um, a teaching like this uh, yet. I think this will be the first time you've, you've heard it. I'm not. I've never heard it. It's it's a revelation that you know Holy Spirit gave to me. Um, maybe you have heard it, but uh, either way, hopefully, I I I pray you'll be blessed. And image and likeness. And the first portion of Scripture we're going to look at is Hebrews chapter one and verse three. Hebrews chapter one and verse three, and this is talking about Jesus. You have to understand this. This portion of scripture is talking about Jesus. And this is what it says. The Son, Jesus, is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor. Do you hear that? We all know that. We all would, we all would and we all do totally agree with that. Jesus means so much to us. Jesus is amazing and he's wonderful and he's awesome. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. I have to read it again, okay? The sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor. The exact expression of God's true nature. His mirror image. This is powerful as it speaks about Jesus. As it represents Jesus. And it's really important that you understand what this is speaking about and speaking towards Jesus. L listen to this language again. You need to. And you're going to find out why I'm encouraging you to really grab hold of this description of Jesus. Really grab hold of this description of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. The, the sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor. The exact expression of of God's true nature, his mirror image. We all know that as Jesus walked this earth, he was filled with love. He was filled with compassion. He was filled with mercy. He was, he was filled with, with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Remember Peter in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, you've heard about Jesus. 
You've heard about our blessed Jesus, the blessed Messiah, the blessed Son of God, our blessed Savior. You've heard about Jesus, how he went about doing good, healing all, because he loved all. He loved all. He was compassionate towards all. He was merciful towards all. The exact expression of God the Father's true nature. His mirror image. Wow. If I asked you, do you believe that about Jesus? I know you would say, yes, without a doubt. He's wonderful. He's amazing. He's majestic. He's brilliant. His brilliance shone like the sun in all its glory. Yeah, I believe that about Jesus. I hope that you do. And I hope that you understand that he was the mirror image of the Father himself. Because now, we're going to look at another portion of scripture. Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. And it says this, for whom God foreknew, for whom God knew in advance, because God's all knowing. He's all knowing. He knows the beginning. He knows the middle. He knows the end. He's all knowing. He can't help from, uh, he can't help but be God and he can't help but be, but be all knowing. So God, right? Knowing, knowing all. He determined that we, you and I, would be conformed to the exact image, duplicate copy, exact image in every way of his son, Jesus Christ, the firstborn amongst many brethren. So when you look at Hebrews chapter 1, and it tells you that the sun is the dazzling radiance of the Father's splendor. That the sun is the express image of God the Father's true nature. That the sun was God the Father's mirror image. And now you look at the fact that God made you and God made me into the exact image and likeness and duplicate copy. So that means the word is a kone. That means when Jesus, when the father looks at you and now he looks at Jesus, he sees the same. And so now we understand that God made us into the exact image, likeness, Duplicate copy of his son, Jesus Christ. Powerful. So now you can understand why I told you to pay attention to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. He's God, the Father's radiant glory. God, the Father's mirror image. Displaying God, the Father's true godly nature and character. And now... God the Father made you into the same image and likeness, duplicate copy of Jesus? Wow. What God's, what, what's God telling us? What God's, what's God telling us? That you need to start thinking more highly of yourself. Your true inner man. The true you. You've been made to be just like Jesus, to look just like Jesus, who's the express image of the Father. So that would mean that you're also the expressed image of the Father and that you possess the same and very nature and character and quality of God. These are two powerful verses, and I hope you see how powerful they are. 
image and likeness. As Jesus is, so are you in this world. If you could see it in Jesus, if you could see it about Jesus, then you'll see it in you and you'll see it about yourself. I want you to look at a portion of scripture now. John chapter 17, verse 22. Now, Jesus is praying before the Father. And one of the things that he says to the Father is this, Father, the glory you've given me, the glory you've bestowed upon me, I have given to them. Wow. Wow. Do you know what the word glory means? The word glory in the Greek is doxa. Doxa. And it means honor. The honor, Father, you've given to me. I've given to them. It means view and opinion. Father, the view and opinion you have towards me and about me now they can experience that same view and opinion from you towards them. Father, the majesty you've bestowed upon me, I've bestowed upon them. The brilliance you've bestowed upon me, I've bestowed upon them. And so much more. Supernatural abilities, su supernatural workings, now, how do we know that this is true? I love the Apostle Paul. I spend 85 to 90% of my time in the Pauline epistles because Paul writes to the new creation, new creation realities, or it could be said, new truthful realities. This is who you are. This is what you can do. And this is what you have. New creation realities. One with Christ, just like Christ. So Paul, in Romans chapter 8, in verse 30, tells us, Whom God called. That's you and I. He called, we answered. He called, we answered. He found us. He found us. We didn't find him. He found us. He called to us. We answered. Faith in Jesus Christ. Those he called. He justified. He declared righteous. Powerful. But then he goes on to say, and those he justified and those he declared righteous, he glorified. He glorified. Jesus said it. Jesus gave it. Paul confirmed it. God glorified us. So now you put Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, with Romans chapter 8, verse 29, with John chapter 17, verse 22, and Romans chapter 8, verse 30, and you will see that you are glorified, just like Jesus, that you have the same view and opinion towards you and about you that the Father had towards Jesus, that you possess his same glory, his same brilliance, his same majesty, that you, just like Jesus, are the mirror image of the Father. This is what is within you. As you gain illumination and revelation of that fact, healing is going to explode from within. The same power that is within that raised Christ will explode the healing into your body. See, this is why Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, right? That, that the, the, the uh, oh, Paul's prayer to the Ephesians, how would it, that, uh, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation would be ignited from within you, that you would know as you are known. Now, many of our Bibles say that Paul's praying that God would give unto you. Now, remember I told you, if a, if a translation is indicating that, that 
we 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 don't yet have or we can't yet do you know it's it's probably poorly translated and when you look up that word give it also can mean spring forth now that's what i believe it means why because earlier in the chapter paul already told us in verse 3 of chapter 1 in ephesians that god has blessed us with all spiritual blessings so that would tell me that the spirit of wisdom and revelation is a spiritual blessing that we already have. So I would say, Paul is praying that the spirit of wisdom and revelation that is within you would spring forth that you would know about yourself what God knows. That the eyes of your understanding would become illuminated. You see, and as the illumination and, and as the revelation grows, that as Jesus is, so are you. That you're glorified. That you're glorified with the glory that Jesus had. Healing is just going to explode from within throughout your whole body. It has to. It must. It's what the Word of God says. No working, no striving, no toiling, no doing. That frustrates his grace. You are fully qualified by God because of faith in Jesus Christ, period. So now, here's the part of the teaching, today's teaching that I, I, I believe many of you might be hearing for the first time. Jesus showed us what that glory looked like. He showed us. And he showed us in Mark chapter 9, verse 2, at the transfiguration. At the transfiguration. And this is, what it, this is what it says in Mark chapter 9, verse 2. And after six days, Jesus take it with him, Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into an high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured transfigured before them transfigured before them now what did jesus have to you know show the disciples you know hey guys look at how glorious i am look at what i possess look at the real me look at what's inside of me i don't think so i firmly believe that what Jesus was doing was showing the disciples and showing us what every born-again believer possesses within themselves. That's what Jesus was showing. Jesus was showing you, showing me, showing the disciples a picture of the glory of God that was within him. He was showing the glory of God that is within each and every one of us. That's what was the purpose of the transfiguration. To reveal the glory that is within you and I. Now I'm going to show you why I, I say that and what the Holy Spirit showed me. The word transfigured. Okay? The word transfigured is in the Greek metamorpho so here it is telling us that jesus was metamorphosed very important outside of the transfiguration because there's another accounting in the other gospels of the transfiguration so outside of the transfiguration the word metamorpho can only be found in two other scriptures Two other scriptures and we're going to look at them the second place it could be found is in Romans chapter 12 verse 2 and this is what it says I like it from the Young's literal translation the King James Version uses the word world it's not world okay it's it's age because the word there is is aeon it's age and what, what's being spoken of there is the present age of law, the covenant of law. 
Paul is exhorting, don't be conformed to this, this age, this covenant of law, but become transformed. We're going to look at the verse. So Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, and be not conformed to this age, this do-it-yourself system, age, law, do-it-yourself works for righteousness. Don't be conformed to this age, but be transformed. Transform the power of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God for salvation, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when that takes place, you're going to prove what God's will is, his good, acceptable, and perfect will. So now, that word, transformed, do you know it's the same word that was used about Jesus where it says he was transfigured? The word, be transformed, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, is metamorpho. Metamorpho. So Paul is saying that the metamorpho, the transformation, takes place by you renewing your mind. Into what? Into the new creation realities. You are. You can. You have. You are holy. You are righteous. You are sanctified. You are perfect. You are complete. You are just like Jesus. As Jesus is, so are you image and likeness. So the more you become renewed to the glorious gospel of grace, the power of the gospel of Christ, the gospel of grace, the anointed one and his anointing, the more you believe that you are, you can and you have, the more you renew your mind, the more the transformation will take place. The more the metamorpho will take place. The more what Jesus showed us in Mark chapter 9 verse 2. When he showed us in all his brilliance and majesty. That will take place in and within you. More and more and more. Each and every day. And as that takes place. Sickness and disease will melt away because it must, because it has to, because the same spirit that was within Christ, that raised him from the dead, is within you. That same glory that you see in Mark chapter 9 verse 2 at the transfiguration is the same glory that Paul is talking about in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, that's within you. And it explodes from within you the more you renew your mind to the truth of the glorious gospel of grace. I am, I can, and I have because of the I am. So that's the second place where you see it. Now, where's the third place? This is, a, this is amazing. This is amazing. This is remarkable. The, 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 the second place is found outside of the transfiguration. Only these three places. The second place is in first, not first, second Corinthians, second Corinthians chapter three and ver, verse 18. Now, this is what it says. And I'm reading from the Young, Young's literal translation. And we all, you and I, with an unveiled face. First of all, you need to know what unveiled face means. If you read before that, in the verses before it, you will see where Paul says, wherever the law is of Moses is read, a veil remains in place. A veil remains in place. And the law of Moses was a do-it-yourself system. You need to, you have to, you must, before God does. Well, whenever the law of Moses is read, whenever mixture is read, a veil, a veil remains. Now you want to know why so many of us were living or are living in guilt, shame, and condemnation? Because of the mixture gospel. 
the gospel of mixture that tells us, well, you need to, you need to do, you, you, you need to, you, you have a responsibility, you have an obligation, you need to, you have to, you must, puts you in the equation. It gives this new covenant of grace a fault. You and I, we, we give it fault, and it has no faults, it's faultless. This is all be, because of what Jesus did. Remember our last session, his travail, his work, his toiling, his effort, not ours. We are declared and made righteous, fully acceptable to God, fully approved and fully qualified, period, faith in Jesus Christ. We need to rest, rest in his love and righteousness. And the fruit of that will be an explosion of faith that calls things that are not as though they are, okay? Unveiled face. You remove any do-it-yourself system. You remove you need to, you must, you have to. Unveiled face, unveiled face. And remember what he says in the verses before this one. He calls the law the administration of condemnation and the administration of death. So of course, whenever we're led to believe there's something we're not doing or there's something we need to do, there's a veil in front of our face. It veils us from the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and it will put us into a place of guilt, shame, and condemnation because that's what it does. It's the administration of guilt, shame, condemnation, and it's the administration of death. But now, unveiled face. It's not up to you. It's not about you. It never was. It's all about Jesus. Now it's all coming to the mirror, right? Coming to the mirror. And we all, with an unveiled face, the glory of the Lord we behold in a mirror. So now, unveil the face. No, you must. No, you need to. No, you, ha you have to. No, you have a responsibility. We're in the covenant of grace. We don't have a veil now. Now we can come to the true mirror, the true mirror, the true image, Jesus Christ. That's the only mirror that will reveal our true selves. That's the only mirror that won't give a distortion. You know, in any other mirror that you look at, you're not going to see the true you. You're always going to see a distortion. Any other mirror you look at, any mirror you look at, hold up your right hand. And the guy, the guy in the mirror holds up his left hand. Hold up your left hand, and the guy in the mirror holds up his right hand. Part your hair in the middle, in, uh, uh, on the right side, and the guy in the mirror parts his hair on the left side. You button your shirt from right to left, the guy in the mirror is going to button his, le his shirt from left to right. You know? As you're putting your makeup on, your mascara, or your eye makeup, whatever, as you're doing your right eye, the, the person in the mirror is doing, doing her left eye. It's always going to be a distortion. I, there's several mirrors in my house. There's only some I like to look at because they make me look taller and slender, more slender. There's others that make me look, whoa, is that what I really look like? No. But you see, there's only one mirror that reflects the truth of who we are. And that's when we look at Christ. And we look at all that Christ is. Perfect and holy and righteous and blameless and sanctified and brilliant and majestic and supernatural and all powerful. And so beholding in the mirror that image to the same image we are being transformed from glory to glory by the spirit of by the holy spirit you come to the mirror where you see Christ and you know you're looking at the image of your true self and you will be changed more and more and more into that very image. Now, that word there, changed in many of your translations or transformed in many other translations, it's the same word found in Mark chapter 9 verse 2 and in Romans chapter 12 Verse two, making it the only three places you'll find this verse, this 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 word. It's metamorph food. You will be metamorph food. The more you look and see Jesus and know 
and believe you're looking at yourself, you will be metamorphosed. You will be changed. You will be transformed. So you see, guys, image and likeness. Image and likeness. Here's God's love perfected. Here's his perfect love. Okay, what does that mean? God is love, but here's the perfection of his love. Listen, you have boldness to stand before him. This is the perfection of his love. Remember Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6? We are now accepted in the beloved. Okay? Well, this is what John is saying in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. We have, we, uh, we have boldness to stand before him. Right? Why? Because we are accepted in the beloved. Here's This is his perfect love. His perfect love. Why? That as Jesus is, image and likeness, so are we in this world, right here, right now, right here, right now, image and likeness. Remember how we started from Hebrews chapter 12, uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, how, how Jesus was the mirror image of the Father. And then Romans chapter 8, verse 29, how we're the very image of Jesus makes us the very image and likeness of God the Father himself. This is why we're beloved. We're beloved. We're accepted in the inner circle. This is why God's love has been perfected. This is how God's love was perfected. As Jesus is, so are we. And in Mark chapter 9, Jesus showed us the true you and I, the glory that's within, the glory that we contain the brilliance and the majesty and the supernatural power and the supernatural ability. And not only that, the approval from God, just like Jesus, approval rating for God could not be any higher. Mark chapter nine, verse two, he was metamorphosed. Romans chapter 12, verse two, you become metamorphosed as you renew your mind. 2 Corinthians chapter 318, as you behold the glory of the Lord, the image of the Lord, you are metamorphosed by the Holy Spirit. Now let me tell you something, guys. Doxa, again, is view and opinion. If you're thinking lowly about yourself, I must not be, I, I know I'm not, I always mess up. I always, I always make mistakes. I, you know, you have to start start looking at yourself as as if you were looking at Jesus. You have to start thinking towards yourself, speaking towards yourself, with the same approval that God had towards Jesus because that's the same approval that God has towards you that's 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 powerful I only speak about Lenny Roll I only speak to Pastor Lenny in the way that God would speak to Jesus or that I would speak to Jesus that's the only way God would speak to me that's the only way I'm going to speak to myself. That's the only way I'm going to speak to my, my wife. She can. She is. She has. She's just like Jesus. So could you imagine if you keep speaking to yourself the way the Father would speak to Jesus? And can you imagine if other ministers started ministering to us as if they were ministering to Jesus? As if, as if we all really believed as Jesus is, so are you? We would never say you have to or you need to. We would only say you are and you can and you have. That's it. Because that's part of renewing your mind into new creation realities that's going to bring about the metamorpho, the transformation. You see, Pastor Lenny tells you you're not believing. That's not going to bring about the transformation because that's not talking about how you're just like Christ. So Pastor Lenny's going to say, you are a believer, and you believe. In fact, you have the believing of Christ. 
That's Lenny's not going to say you need to develop your faith. No. You need to? No. Pastor Lenny's going to say you have the faith of Jesus. You have the faith of God. And you operate in it. You love like Christ love. You're as humble as Christ is. You see, if I start speaking to you in new creation realities, then you're going to live out your new creation realities. But if I keep destroying that by telling you you're not, or you haven't been, or you can't, whatever, that's going to destroy new creation realities in your life. So let's start thinking right, and let's start speaking right, and let's start believing right. As Jesus is, so are we. As Jesus is, so are we. I love you guys. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you show us that as your dear son Jesus is, so are we. And I pray that this revelation would grow in, in the lives of everyone that's listening. That, Father, you have formed them to be just like Jesus in every single way, in your view and opinion of them, in the majesty and brilliance and supernatural ability and power that they have, in the character. They're just like Jesus. I pray that revelation and understanding would grow that the new creation realities would, would explode in their lives. And then that means healing is exploding and will explode in their lives. Because, Father, they are realizing and understanding that the same glory, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is renewing, restoring, and revitalizing their bodies. Cancer has to melt away. Depression has to flee. Lungs have to be cleaned. Hearts are made strong. Brains are fully functioning and remembering. Ears are hearing as they've been designed to hear. Eyes are seeing the way they've been designed to see. Shoulders, necks, joints, knees, all being restored and renewed and revitalized in Jesus' name. Now listen, guys, I love you, and I can't wait for the next time. But uh, Julianne is allowed, allowing me this privilege to share my YouTube page. I can only do so much here with these sessions. If you want to learn more or you want to hear more, you know, there's our YouTube page. It's just real easy. It's real easy. Leonard Grola Ministries. Leonard Grola Ministries. Also, we, we have a website. And uh, the website is newlifeministrymhv.org. It's on the board. And uh, we encourage you to visit it. It's got, it's got like 500 messages on there. 500 messages, podcasts, live messages, video messages, archive messages. And then they, uh, Julianne and Butch have allowed me the uh, privilege of promoting my book that was made available on April 1st, The True Greatest Forces in the Life of a Believer, Love and Righteousness. It's a game changer, guys. As you know and as you grow in God's love for you and your righteousness, healing, believing, faith, it will all be a fruit. So hey, I love you guys and I'm look forward I'm looking forward to seeing you.